Hi everyone, I'm the Penny Pinching Prepper and welcome to my channel. Um, for those of you who haven't been here before, I'm so glad that you've made it. And for those of you who've been around for a minute, thank you so much for coming back time and time again. <clears throat> uh, today's subject's going to be a, a simple one, one I'm sure most of you have gone over. But for those of you who haven't gone over it, um, we're going to take some time and build a simple first aid kit, or at least get it started, um, to help you out and, and show you some ideas of where to get started. And then, of course, you can always add from there, because there's things I don't have on hand um, to... Uh, Complete the first aid kit. I'm, I'm missing little things like uh, I don't have an extra sharpie on hand right now. I don't have um, extra single packets of uh, super glue. Um, I don't have a small bottle of iodine tincture on hand right now. Extra. I mean, I have them already in other first aid kits, but I don't have any extra on hand right now. So these are all, you know things that we can add as we go on as you you pick them up you know or as i get them but this will be the only video so we're going to start off real simple uh if you watched my prepping why on disability and um uh Disability and Social Security video. Um, this video will be helpful because it will coincide and you'll be able to do this for basically free. Um, that's that's how I've done it. Uh, so the, the first thing is, is this wasn't free. Well, it was, but... Couldn't get it on the program, but uh, I was helping a friend clean out an old abandoned house on his property and uh, haul stuff out to the dump, and there was two of these little uh, cases. They, they had little, little, little lids. <clears throat> they, they snap up, and so I grabbed them for him, so I didn't pay for that, and then I had an old piece of plastic. Um, that I cut up and made this little divider just uh, hot glued it in there and it's so that we can channel in these little little packets um, these are uh, antiseptic towelettes all right the the BZKs uh, this is what you want to use when you cut yourself and you want to clean the wound up and uh, something along that lines or get a scrape and you want to you know make sure that it's clean um, and so we're gonna take a quick second and we're gonna put a bunch of those in there so just uh, like so just kind of stack them in there um, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it any way you want, but this is the way I like to keep my stuff organized and uh, it helps a lot. So if you have the times and the patience and the means, maybe you'd like to make yourself a little, little separator like that to keep all this stuff nice and, uh, organized. And so we'll just keep putting those in there until we get... Oh, about two-thirds of the way down. All right, so I think we're about there. We're about two to eight-thirds of the way down. Then next, what we're going to put in are these uh, sterilized alcohol pads. Um, now, most people think, and, and I've heard this a lot in first aid kits, they talk about these things being too small. Um, and it's because they're not for wound care. They're, they're not for... Um, you know, cleaning out a cut or a wound or a scrape or a burn or anything like that. These are actually for sterilizing 
like uh, let's say you have to give somebody an injection for like uh, diabetes this is how you'd want to clean off the injection site is with these little alcohol pads um, if let's say you got a sliver and you're picking it out with a needle and we all know the trick with burning it with a lighter but then most people just take a, a piece of dirty tissue to wipe off the the carbon soot <clears throat> um, you should actually use one of these to uh, ensure that it stays sterilized um, you know things like that um, if for any reason you've got a um, cut something uh, and you'd want to clean the the wound ahead of time this is what you'd want to use um, that's why they're so small is because they're they're not made for cleaning the wound they're they're made for cleaning other stuff or um, an injection site or something like that so guys these little alcohol pads if you want alcohol to to clean your your hands off and stuff get the the moist towelettes they're they're water and and alcohol on on a towelette you know and they're bigger you know they're like that big so um <clears throat> don't think that's what these these alcohol pads are for don't don't make that mistake i've heard so many other people make that oh they're so small like i can't use them to to clean uh my wounds up and it's because like i said that's that's what the anti uh towelettes the anti back or antiseptic towelettes are for these are much bigger in fact I'll, I'll show you i got plenty of them you see how big they are all right nice nice full sheet this is for cleaning off a wound and making sure that you know it's not getting any bacteria in it now these little alcohol pads like i said are very small look at the difference all right let me see if i can get this guy open there it is that's the extent of it this is why everybody's saying you know oh they're so small they're so small well they're not made for you get a cut or a burn to clean out with alcohol in fact um <clears throat> Most doctors and nurses will highly recommend that you don't use alcohol to clean out a wound. Now, can you? Yes, of course you can. But in this day and age when there's so many better products that you can use, why would you use alcohol that's going to sting and burn and dry out the cut and create cracking maybe and stuff like that when you can get it all sterilized with one of these and call it good? So, let's finish stuffing that up a little bit. Okay, now that those are all stuffed in there real good, we'll get those out of the way. All right, so, there we go. Nice little row of everything, nice and neat in there. Um, another thing I like to put in are these little guys right here. Um, and if you don't know what these are, these are uh, saline jet sprays. All right, this is just regular old saline solution. If you get something in your eye, you can use this to wash your eye out. If you get a bad gash from like uh, asphalt or something like that where it's got uh, particles in it and you got to clean it out, you can use this. You, you put it down in the wound spray and it actually pushes it out versus spraying over it and pushing it back in. Um, I, I, I just, I like these things a lot. So, uh, I always tend to put at least two or three. So, I'm going to put three in today because I said I had a little extra room. All right. So, uh, down here on the bottom, we usually like to put flat things. So, we're going to put some uh, different types of gauze pads. All right. So, here's a non-stick, uh, compress, non, uh, non-adhesive pads these these don't stick they don't have any stickiness on it um, i'm gonna put three of those down in there all right and then i've got some bigger band-aids these are our big band-aid pads all right um, see if you can 
kind of make them out in there. But anyways, I'm going to put, oh, you know what? Let's just empty the box. I've only got five of them. We'll put five of those down in there. <clears throat> and then I got other ones in here. So uh, here's some large pads. I'm going to put a couple of them large pads down in there. And then on this side, oh, here are some medium adhesive pads. So I'm going to put, oh, another two of those in there. Okay, so there's the medium adhesive pads, and then I've got small adhesive pads, and I'm going to put three of those in there. Alright, so now we got a, a good amount of adhesive pads in there. Some tape. We'll take that out too and stick it in there, of course. Now, uh, I also got some of these gauze rolls now these are more extras that I have but what I did is because I like to save space is I went and took a couple of them and uh, I vacuum sealed them so I can get you know basically two in the size of one so we're gonna put those down in there because we always need gauze right that that works in a, a first aid kit really nicely some gauze um since we were on pads and we're on gauze let's go to band-aids next now for band-aids i tend to like to uh oh where do i have them here they are I, I save and collect these, these Ziploc baggies. I think they come in handy all the time, and usually they do. So, let's uh, fill these up with Band-Aids so we can keep uh, our Band-Aids nice and organized. So, I've got some large Band-Aids. Probably about 15 of them. All right, well, this is just barely going to fit, so we really got to tuck things down in there nice. And then I've got some smaller Band-Aids, and I've probably got, you know, another 15 or so of these. Didn't really count, I just made a nice little stack. We're going to put those in right next to the large Band-Aids. Okay. And then, oh, for shoots and giggles, let's get fancy just because I have some, okay? All right. These are hydro-sealed Band-Aids. Um, these actually bond to your skin uh, with water. They're, they're great. They stick on at first, but then you, you add a little bit of water, and it literally bonds to the skin. These are great little Band-Aids to have. Um, and... Uh, Let's see, we're going to put, you know what, I've got a whopping six of them in there. Let's go ahead and just put the, are those going to fit in there or do I need to put them in something else? Oh, I think they're barely going to fit. So, I'll stick those down in there. Oh, I could be wrong. Nope, I'm going to have to put those ones in somewhere else. Oh, well, no big deal. But I do have some waterproof band-aids, and they'll fit. They come in two different sizes, large and small. Uh, looks like I've mostly got small ones left, so I'm going to put one large one over there with this guy. Oh, I got two large ones I'm going to put over there with those. And then I'm going to put the small ones in with the rest of them. All right, so now we got waterproof band-aids down in there. Large band-aids, small band-aids, waterproof band-aids, and 
We got some butterflies. All right, so let's put some butterflies in there. What the heck? They're gonna fit, so why not? Butterflies always come in handy. Let's put, uh, let's see, uh, five to a row. Yeah, let's go ahead and empty the box. Let's put 10 of them in there. All right, guys. So I'm gonna put 10 butterflies in there. Butterflies. Gotta love the butterflies. They're so pretty. All right. So that takes care of having, you know, some band-aids. Not a whole lot, but enough for a first aid kit. Um, and honestly, you should have multiple first aid kits. You shouldn't try to pack it all into one first aid kit uh, unless, you know, it's for, um, you know, a bug out situation where you know you're not going to come home for months and months and months. And then you can build yourself a big first aid kit to, to grab for something like that. But it's better to have a bunch of small, multiple first aid kits that you can put in different places. Like, you know, under the sink, in the bathroom, behind the seat of your truck, in the trunk of your car, in your backpack. Um, you know, like your, your day bag or your get home bag. Uh, um, you know, at work, whatever, out in your shop. You know, just have them all over the place. That way you don't have to go looking for them. They'll always be there. Okay, so now I do have a slightly larger one. And for the slightly larger one, we're going to go ahead and put these larger band-aids in it. And the wound seal band-aids, the, the hydro seals. Um, and since I have the room... Where was it? Hmm. Where was it? Oh, who cares? Uh, that's all right. We're just going to go ahead and... You know what? Since I don't really need it, we're going to go ahead and take all of these band-aids out. Of this smaller one. See, we're having fun building it together, guys. See, I'm learning as I go along. You know, you never know how these things are going to fit together with what you have. So, I'm going to put these band-aids in there. Make a mess while I'm doing it. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we just put them all in there now. They're in one packet together. So that'll fit just like so. See, we got some room on the end of there. So we're going to stick a roll of tape like that down to the side. Right, right here on the side. And I think I have another roll in here because you can't, uh, yep, I do, can't ever have enough tape. So we're going to go ahead and stick a, a second roll of tape down in there. Um, the other thing I'm going to add is this uh, self-adhesive bandage wrap type tape stuff. Um, I have a little extra. And that's actually going to be because... I'm also going to add a finger splint. Okay, so we're going to put, oh, we should put something down in there to keep it from getting too smashed. Why don't we take, oh, we'll take, I know I got it down in here somewhere. Ah! Some Tylenol, right guys? Always good to have a little Tylenol. Oh, maybe that's bigger than I thought it was, but it's still going to work. And we are going to put this around the Tylenol so that the finger splint don't get bent up and broken. And we're going to put that down in there. And then to go with the Tylenol... I have some Advil, 
or some Aglieve. I can't remember which. I always get the two mixed up. Some Advil. Okay, I did have it right. And uh, the reason being is we got one painkiller, one anti-inflammatory, depending on the situation we need it for. Um, eventually down the line, you might want to add some like Imodium or uh, some, uh, you know, something like that. You know, other pills, you know, something to keep you from losing your stool, something to help you lose your stool, you know, all that kind of stuff. All the different little stuff that you can think of, you know, eventually put it in there. Um, you know what? I think I would rather have that. No, oh, that's fine. Right there. All right. So another thing, because it's always good once you clean up your wound, put a little triple antibiotic on it. So we're going to throw a tube of that down in there. We're going to put that tape down in there, like I said. I think it should go. No. It can come right there. That's where it can go. All right, so the other thing I have that I vacuum sealed is this is just an ACE bandage. There's the little things down there inside. Um, if you do vacuum seal them like I do to save room, if you're using these little straps, make sure they're on top, not on the side when you vacuum seal it so that they go flat and don't puncture anything. So ACE bandage, always good to have. We're going to put that down in there. Um... I've got a spare chapstick, so I'm going to throw a chapstick in there because it is a first aid item and you never know when you might forget your chapstick or run into somebody that needs it and you can just give it to them. Um, now here's thinking outside of the box a little bit, guys. I have one of these Whirl Packs and uh, some water uh, purification tablets. And I'm actually going to wrap the tablets up in the water packet because uh, you never know when you're going to need some clean water. And you might be in a situation where you don't have access to clean water to clean yourself up or your wounds and you're going to have to make that clean water. Um... Or if the person is ill and you need to hydrate them, they're going to need drinking water, uh, whatever the situation might be. So I'm going to slide that down there on the side because there's room there. Um, another little thing I have that we can add in here um, is some liquid skin, also known as, or uh, some new skin, also known as liquid band aids. Um, guys, this is not like what you would use super glue for this is literally a band-aid um it will not hold the wound together it just covers it up keeps dirt and stuff out of it so if you're in a situation where your band-aid is just going to get dirty or stuff's going to get pushed up underneath it or um something along that lines uh you're going to be working in water and the band-aid is just going to fall off you don't have any waterproof band-aids whatever um, this stuff right here works great. You seal up the wound, you go about your business. It's good for about a day or two. Um, but it makes it a lot easier to make sure that a, a wound stays protected when you're getting dirty. Um, uh, so I'm going to put a bottle of that down in there. Uh, what else can we put in there? So... <clears throat> I like to put some of these uh, glucose tablets in my first aid kit because um, if you happen to run across somebody who's uh, hypoglycemic, um, not to get confused with hyper, hyper is where you have to take insulin to take your blood sugar down. Hypo is where you have low blood sugar and you uh, need to bring your sugar up. So make sure if you see anybody in a diabetic coma you make sure to check over them for a bracelet a necklace id or something that says whether they're hypo or hyper uh, before you use this um, have an idea of what you're doing um, the other thing they're great for is if you're running out of energy 
um, and you need a glucose boost um, out there in the wilderness doing your thing, um, if you've ever watched Alone, they're always complaining about glucose drop-off, glucose drop-off, um, because they can't get starches or carbs, um, right here, that'll take care of you. So I'm going to shove that down in there really good and deep. All right. And then the next thing we're going to put in there is, oh yes, of course, can't go without these. Tums, right? We all get our belly aching, so why not put a thing of Tums in there, all right, little thing of Tums, they fit down in there, there we go. Um... So now you got something to keep all them belly acres quiet with, right? Don't need them crying when she hits the fan and you're uh, trying to, you know, stay out of uh, people's views and earshot. Last thing you need is them whining about their belly, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw a little thing of hand sanitizer in there because it's going to fit. All right. Um... Uh, the other thing is, is I made up some of these, which is just uh, some little Ziploc baggies that I got on my uh, my uh, disability program, uh, and I got it out of the medicine area, the the, the pharmacy area, and um, I just marked them off. You know how much is in it, what it is. But those are just some cotton balls. I'm going to put a couple of packets of cotton balls in there. Okay. The other thing I did is I got some nitrate gloves. And I'm going to put some nitrate gloves in there as well. All right. Um, I also made up a couple of packets of Q-tips. I'm going to put those in there as well. Um, and then one other thing I made up in the vacuum sealer, um, are these alcohol wipe hand sanitizers. These are the great big ones, but, uh, they're really hard to fit into a first aid kit. And once you open them right, they start to go bad. So I vacuum sealed some of these up, um, five of them. To a thing that way you can open them up and not worry about the other ones going bad so i'm going to put a couple of those in there so that that gives me 10 of them and you know what i want to leave a little room for extras later so i'm going to call this pretty much a done deal now it doesn't look like there's a lot of room in there but there is still a lot for little things like i said a little bit of super glue you can put a little thing of uh iodine tincture over here there is still plenty of room in this first aid kit and you saw everything that we just shoved into it which was quite a bit um the only thing that i didn't get around to putting in it uh was a full arm sling but to be honest with you um for a standard first aid kit you know doesn't really need to be in there get something smaller like a triangle bandage that's probably what i'll do uh the other thing you can put in there in fact hold on one second um i got this one free from my electric company but it's just a little flashlight um nothing fancy you know it puts off a little bit of light but it's super thin super cheap um and completely waterproof uh, you, you completely submerge this thing and it's going to be good um so slide that down in the side so there's a little bit of light and uh, we're going to call that good um, until I get some more stuff uh, that I'll eventually add in it, like a marker. Like I said, there's a few little things that can be fit in there and add to it. I know this isn't perfect, and I know it's not complete, but I wanted to help you guys get some ideas on how to start building your own first aid kit instead of going out and buying a pre-made one. So... 
With that being said, there it is. Your own DIY first aid kit, boo-boo kit, whatever you want to call it. Guys, thank you so much if you stuck around this long. I really appreciate it. I know I can blab for a while, so uh, you guys sticking around this long, I, I really appreciate it. And if you could do me a favor, if you did, give me a couple of thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment down below. And if you're new to this channel and got any useful information out of it, please consider subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, guys... Remember, God's good and God bless. Have a good one, everyone.